Hello, this is Aaron Kupferberg at Power Popaholic, and today I am talking with Susanna Hoffs from the Bengals. And uh, how are you doing today, Susanna? Great, thank you. Great. Um, I know you have a new album coming out now, uh, The Sweetheart of the Sun. And uh, this is, it's been a long while. It's been about seven years since the last Bengals album, right? Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and I noticed that, you know, all three of you, have done numerous projects, different projects over the years. Uh, you notably worked, uh, did the Su Sid and Susie albums with Matthew Sweet. Um, I know Matthew produced uh, this album, correct? Well, Matthew co-produced the Sweetheart record, yeah, Sweetheart of the Sun. Um, we ended up working with him, um, recording, uh, doing all the tracking up at his house, his studio where he lives, and then doing... Um, a lot of the overdubs and finishing touches um, at, at my house, where I kind of built a sister studio. When I was working with Matthew on the Sid and Susie projects, the Under the Covers Volume 1 and 2, right. um, Matthew helped me create a, a kind of a sister studio so we could work uh, like on different things at different times because we both have such hectic schedules. So that's sort of what ended up happening on the Bangles record as well. Cool. And, and it's a good coincidence because Matthew has a new album out as well uh, coming out. Yes. Are you guys going to be doing any touring together? or? Yeah, I mean, Matthew and I are about to embark on Under the Covers Volume 3, which we, we've worked our way from the 60s, 70s, through through the 60s and 70s up to the 80s. So we're, we're tracking now for that record, and um, I've just made a solo record, so... Uh, Matthew and I are thinking of doing a, some sort of touring together next year, maybe where we both do solo stuff and then do our Sid and Susie thing. It'll be a pretty exciting night if we can pull it off, because um, I'm such a Matthew Sweet fan. Um, and I know it was the anniversary of the Girlfriend record for him this year, which is one of my all-time favorite records. But yeah, we don't have anything set in stone yet, but, but that's what we're uh, planning for next year. Awesome, awesome. Well, going back, speaking of other musician friends of yours, I know on your first album, um, or maybe your first two albums, you, you had some music written by Prince. Do you still have a, a, a friendship with him? Do you still t stay in touch with him? I, I haven't been in touch with him really since the end of the 80s, actually. I can't think. I, I, my memory is not so great, because I'm so busy all the time. I start, there's such a jumble going on, but I'm trying to to rack my brain if I've seen him since then. No, but mostly it was the 80s where we were in touch and, and uh, he had given me Manic Monday for the Bengals to do and uh, the Bengals used to hang out with him and jam with him all the time. He used to come jump on stage with us and play wow. at our concerts. and So it was, a, it was a pretty special time for us. He's, he's a real amazing artist, obviously. Everyone knows that, but to be standing next to him and watch him play guitar is just uh, kind of mind blowing. So <laughs> I hope someday to have that opportunity again. Awesome. To perform. Well, speaking of you know other uh, you know musical heroes that uh, you've uh, been around, I saw you in my friend Seth Swirsky's film Beatles Stories last summer. Yes. And uh, you were so starstruck by Ringo. And I was wondering, have you ever met Paul McCartney? No, I've, I've been walking down the street when he's walked past me, but uh, we we have a very uh, couple of close mutual friends, but no, I, I haven't met him uh, in, in the proper sense, talked with him or anything, but um, my friend and producer from the first two Bengals records and our old A&R man as well, David Kahn, um, is, you know, produces Paul's records, and now, and I've, I've recently... Uh, gotten together with David and had a chance to talk about, you know, all of what he's been up to with Paul. And also, my really dear friend Rusty Anderson is his guitar player on, you know, does all the lead stuff at the concerts and has been touring with Paul for years now. Oh. And uh, Rusty was in my band when I was touring uh, with Don Henley as a solo artist. And yeah, I go way back with Rusty. So I have these very close connections to him, but I have yet to, you know, chat with him. Yeah, well, I've I've interviewed Rusty before and reviewed his stuff. He, he's wonderful. But yeah. also, in, in relation to that, um, I also know you you played last summer with uh, uh, George Harris's son. Yeah, I um, well, I've I've got gotten to know Danny through other mutual friends, mm -hmm. and Danny played on uh, the second Sid and Susie record. You know, um, on Beware of Darkness, one of his dad's great songs, George George's great songs, um, and um, 
you know, Danny came to my my birthday party a couple of years ago when I turned, I shouldn't tell my age, but when I turned 50, Danny was there and we all jammed. It was Lindsay Buckingham was there. We had this big jam session. It was really really fun. Matthew was there. The Bengals were there. Um, so yeah, we had a couple of opportunities to play with Danny, and and uh, he's a real special boy. He's <laughs> Wow, he he looks so much like his dad. I mean, it's it's kind of amazing when you're like in the room with him. But he's just a a, a joyful person, a lovely person with a heart of gold. I just think he's real special. I think he's out touring with Ben Harper now, isn't he? Yeah, I, I think so. Great. Yeah. Awesome. Well, um, here's a another question. Since uh, we're moving along here, uh, what's you're married to a movie director? Have you ever considered writing an entire movie soundtrack? Well, you know, I've considered actually doing score, which is something that Matthew and I actually met with some people about pursuing, but we realized it's a really huge <laughs> diversion from the path that we've been on, and it's um, it's it's a very hard job composing for movies. I would do songwriting for movies. I think getting into the score world is such a tricky and tricky thing you know you really you really have to change for your whole mindset from writing sort of to please yourself and to sort of an outlet that you know for stories you want to tell about your life or whatever to writing to serve something else which is to serve the mood of a scene and seeing it firsthand the process through watching all my husband make all of the movies he's made in the last 15 years you know it's uh it's it's extraordinary the work that composers do, but it's it's not an easy job by any stretch. So, um, but yes, I mean I'm really interested in um, writing songs for theater pieces, for musicals, for mm -hmm. you know, uh, if it was a song oriented situation, I would love that. Okay, cool. Well, um, also I've noticed you know over the years you've amassed a lot of lost tracks including you know unreleased an unreleased solo album that's sort of like in the ether somewhere yeah. as well as a lot of bangles tracks that have sort of been probably demos or floating around someplace is there any chance that I, i'll see in the future a bangles box set with all this great extras that i keep wow. hearing about that's a great idea we've talked about it we just haven't um quite <laughs> had the focus to really you know work on it and I think I think it's something that should be done I, I think it's it would be a fantastic thing um, for us to go back and, and now that you know this was the 30th 2011 was the 30th anniversary of the band's existence you know we, we mm -hmm. got together in 1981 which is a long time ago now um, so it's time for us to start you know looking back before we start forgetting all of that stuff you know I mean <laughs> um, we, we've been wanting to share our stories and 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 you know, a lot of things one of one of us will remember part of, and the next one will fill in the blank. It's like pieces of a puzzle, you know. Right. Um, so I think there is a lot of good history there, and and some you know sort of uh, hidden treasures that we can put together in a box set. We just haven't dealt with that yet. Right. And and if you do something like that, you'll get in touch with. Uh, your old band members that aren't there anymore, in particular, right. uh, like Mickey Steele. Um, I know she wasn't part of this album. She hasn't. She was on the prior album, but she wasn't involved here. Uh, did she just want to do something else, or she wasn't available, or you felt that uh, she, when she left the band last time, that was it? She didn't want to return. Oh yeah, it was pretty clear um, when she decided to pursue other things and st step away from, you know, pursuing the Bangles um, as a writing, recording, touring entity, which is what we we had sort of started up again back when we we grouped at, regrouped at the end of the nineties. Mm -hmm. um, and she was, you know, on board for for a good chunk of that. And then I think it was like about, I want to say 2005, mm -hmm. that she just, um, you know, just didn't feel that it was something she wanted to continue to do. Because it was a pretty big time commitment and, and has been, even though, you know, I, I run into people, they don't really, really realize the Bengals are out there working again. But we actually have been working steadily for the past 11 years, um, just a fair amount under the radar. Because, you know, we sort of, it's a it's a music business is so different now than it was when we started out in the eighties. You right, know, yes. and it's different, and plus we have kids and families and 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 a lot a lot on our plate. There's a lot of juggling going on, and I think uh, 
Yeah, so she didn't, um, it wasn't It wasn't the natural thing to uh, make the record with her because she made it pretty clear she she had moved on to other things at that point, you know, in two, I guess it was 2005. Oh, maybe you'll get some commentary at one point if you talk to her. Um, sure. Another friend of yours I'm a big fan of is uh, Susan Cowsill. And oh, I know, sure. And I know you know her and her family. Um, how did you end up um, meeting with her and, and uh, getting to know her? Well, Vicky, Vicky, my bandmate in the Bengals, is married to John Cowsill, her brother. Oh, okay. But prior to that, Vicky um, was uh, moved to New Orleans during the 90s um, and was in a band for many, many years with Susan Cowsill called the Continental Drifters. Yes. And so they still occasionally perform as the Continental Drifters. Um, Peter Holsapple from the DBs was also in that band. Wonderful and, artist, uh, yeah. Susan was married to him for a while. And um, let's see, Susan and Vicky work together in a, in a duo. They have a duo that performs mostly acoustic shows called the Psycho Sisters. Mm -hmm. And uh, you may see more of that coming up. I, I know that they have some some plans to do things together. But so there's a lot a lot of council connections to the Bengals. Awesome. I, well, just let me just circle back to your new album now. Um, it's, okay. it's it's a great album. I've heard it. It's most of the the first six tracks on it. I just just can't tear myself away from them. Oh, uh, you thank just you. you just got that wonderful Rickenbacker sound, and it's layered, and the harmonies. Are there like like you never left? Is it like you never left when you're when you're playing with uh, both other band members, or is it pretty much you know Vicky and Debbie? Basically, you just fit into that familiar groove. Absolutely, and thank you so much for what you said about the record. Um, yes, it is, and um, we just performed on the radio this morning. It was like it really is so familiar. It is a familiar groove. We fall right into it. Um, the harmonies are just so natural for us. We've got the great blessing of having sisters in the band, and, you know, there's a genetic blend that occurs when you've got that family thing, that family sound going on. Just, and, yeah, um, just like the Beach Boys. Uh, it's very special for <laughs> yeah. me. I, 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 you know, I, I really uh, I feel like, they're like sisters, you know. I grew up with two brothers, so I never had a sister. But it's kind of like I have I have two sisters in the Petersons, you know. We're really kind of like a family at this point. We've been working together for 30 years. It started in the garage of my parents' house, you know, 30 years ago. And I guess it was in January we met in, two, in 1981. Well, we had spoken on the phone and actually met in 1980, but when we actually met for the first time and played in the garage and we decided that night we basically said i do let's let's do this you know um the night we met and we've had a couple of hiatuses here and there but mostly we've been working together non-stop wow that's great well i really appreciate your time um oh. and and uh thank you so much for talking to me and uh we will uh we'll be on the lookout for uh sweetheart of the sun when is it when is the official release date uh, september 27th i believe so, so, is the all right so that's that comes out so that's coming out look for that and thank you again susanna hoffs of the bangles thank you <laughs> okay take care now okay you too okay. great talking with you great talking bye, with you. bye.